Okay, Nico, it's up to you. All right, thank you. Um, welcome everyone to the, the main combinatoric seminar for today. Uh, today we're gonna be listening to a, a speaker from UBC. It's Farid Ali Niaifag. Um, and he's going to be speaking on a categorification of the Malvenuto Reutenauer algebra via a tower of groups. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is a joint work with Matt Tim. And I want to talk about, about the categorification of the Malvenuto Reutenauer algebra. Uh, hopefully, I give a sense of what is. Uh, the categorification, a categorification of the Malinutor Retinola of algebra. Okay, so the first episode is I give you a pilot of what or I want to do in this talk. So you see almost uh, an abstract of the talk here. So if we open a textbook in algebraic combinatorics, the standard ones, we will see symmetric functions at some point. And symmetric functions is a graded, at the beginning, a graded vector space. It has a very nice basis, which is called sure functions. And if you look at the elements in uh, degree n, the basis is indexed by integer partitions. Sure functions are very interesting. We will talk more about them. Then with a product and co-product, they may make symmetric functions a half algebra. And many of these books at some point talk about representation theory and especially representation theory of symmetric groups. So they look at the tower of symmetric groups and they look at the class function of each symmetric group, which the irreducible characters are a basis for it. And they are, again indexed by integer partitions and they glue all of them together as a direct sum these are vector spaces and they make a new vector space a graded vector space if you look at here the uh, dimension of each degree is equal to the dimension of each degree of symmetric function so these two actually as vector spaces are the same then when they map sure functions to irreducible characters here, they will see that actually not uh, only this is a isomorphism of vector spaces, this is an isomorphism of half algebra because we can make by induction and restriction functor the set of class function as a half algebra, which is isomorphic to the half algebra of symmetric function. So what is categorification? We pick up a half algebra and then we pick up some category in a way that we map a basis of or half algebra to simple objects in or category in a way that the product and co-product are equivalent to two functors in or category here. We are working with symmetric functions where category is the category of all representations of symmetric groups uh, or sure functions mapped to simple objects which are irreducible representations and product and co-product will map to induction and restriction functors. But the question is, can we do this for more half algebras? The problem is working with uh, with working with character theories are very difficult. And in some cases, it's almost impossible to classify all irreducible characters. For example, if we look at the unipotent upper triangular matrices, those matrices with one upper triangular matrices with one on the main diagonal and entries are from a finite, set, finite uh, field, then for that group, we can't classify all irreducible characters. But Diakonis and Isaac define a star. A star was born, the star was super character theory. And by using super character theory, they find a nice super character theory of unipotent upper triangular matrices. And with 28 outer, in a 28 outer paper, 
they show that non commute symmetric functions in non commuting variables actually are are isomorphic to some half algebra that comes from representation theory and they categorify symmetric functions in non commuting variables later this star which was super character theory had a child the child was called normal lattice super character theory that I call it the naive child. This naive, with using this naive child, uh, with a work with Natium, we could classify the Catalan quasi-symmetric functions and we could categorify the Catalan quasi-symmetric function. So now we have a chart, a, a, a table, a, a, a diagram of some combinatorial half algebras in the vertices the vertices are non commutative symmetric functions symmetric function quasi symmetric functions and free quasi symmetric functions or malonutra tonawa the free quasi symmetric functions are malonutra is the malonutra tonawa half algebra and i call this malonutra tonawa half algebra a beautiful castle so i have a beautiful castle which is malonutra tonawa half algebra and I have a naive child, which is a normal lattice super character theory. In the end of this talk, this naive child tried to take over this beautiful castle. And we want to see how this is happening. And the story starts from there. So, but still, this is an open problem how to uh, translate this map descent to a phone tour. But let us start and see. Uh, how the story is going on. So a star is born, super character theory. So what is character theory at the beginning? Uh, actually, it's the composition of a home group homomorphism from the group to general linear groups and trace. We have the degree of a character is the value of character at one, and it's always equal to n. And the kernel of a character is those element in G that the value of character at G is equal to the value of character at one. And moreover, we denote by IRRG the set of all irreducible characters of a group G. So uh, characters are fixed on conjugacy classes. And since characters are giving me everything about Character theory, irreducible characters giving me everything about character theory of a group, then we can construct uh, a table that uh, columns are indexed by conjugacy classes, the rows are indexed by irreducible characters. And also, if we pick up one element here, that is the value of this character on some element in this conjugacy class. And character table can decode everything about character theory of a group. Here about abelian groups, abelian groups have some nice property. The first thing is the degree of all characters are one. So the degree of each character is one. Therefore, if I want to look at the kernel of a character, I should look at those elements that are mapped to one. So for example, if you look at the character table of a, a, a group generated by a, a order two element and a group generated by order four elements, which is an oblique group, then if you look at this character, the kernel of these characters, of this character are one B, B squared and BQ. The reason is the value of the character at B, B squared and BQ all are one. So, but character theory or some groups are quite very difficult, not very difficult, impossible to uh, classify. For example, the unipotent upper triangular matrices, which is the main upper triangular matrices with one on main diagonal and entries are from a finite field. Classifying the irreducible characters of this one is quite impossible and they call this problem one. But Diaconis and Isaac, uh, which, which by uh, looking at the, some work of Andre, they come up with the idea of super character theory. So uh, therefore, 
to have a better theory for a wild group, uh, Diaconis and Isaac, and especially Andre, came with the super character theory. Uh, but what is super character theory? Here, I, I explain super character theory by using character table. So this is kind of contradiction. Actually, we want to define super character theory because we can't have the character table. But why I am doing this, uh, there are some pedagogical reason here because whenever I want to talk about character theory, uh, super character theory, I found that when I explain it by using character table, people get it better. So that's why even there is a contradiction here. So what is the first step? First, you, you write the character table of some group. For example, here we still have a spore. Then we multiply each row by the first element of the row, which is the degree of the character. For example, here I have three, one, minus one, zero, minus one. I multiply everything by three. So I have nine, then here is one, I multiply by three, minus one multiplied by three, and those two also multiply by three. And I continue this one for all rows, and therefore uh, I make a new table. So the question now is, can I, can I divide this new table to some blocks that has three properties? So I want to divide my new table to some blocks that has three properties. The first property is this one always must be one of my blocks. This single one must be one of my blocks. The number of blocks in each row is equal to the number of blocks in each column. So I have two here and two here. And moreover, the column sums must be the same. So if we look at here, minus three plus three plus zero plus minus one is minus one. The sum of these is minus one. Some of these two also are minus one. Then instead of all of this block, I just put the column sum here. And in my new table, I index the columns by union of all of this. So I index this one column by the union of all of this one. And then for my characters, I add them up and I index it with these two characters. So I have a new table. I have a new table. When I put these two in a set here, this one and the union of these two in a set, I have a partition of my group. And also when I put these two here, I have two characters. So actually super character theory is two pairs that comes from these, uh, these uh, few steps that I went forward. What I did, I pick up a character table, I multiply by the first element, divide it to some blocks. And then instead of those blocks, I put the sum of the column sums, and then I index the rows and columns by new ones. And those rows and columns give me a super character theory. Now you can see another super character theory here. Why? Because I divided this character table to some blocks in a way that this one always is a block. The number of blocks in each the number of blocks in each row is equal to the number of blocks in each column. And moreover, if I look at one block, the sum of the column sums are the same. So three plus minus three is zero, three plus minus three is zero. Again, instead of this one, I put the union and I make my new table by, so here I add up these two. So I make a new table and I put these, oh, sorry. I put these two in, in a set, give me a partition of the group, and I have a set of characters, which is these characters. And this one also is a super character theory. But what, what is a super character theory in general? How they define it? So what I did, I had table divided to blocks with some uh, characteristic, and then I said, oh, the rows and columns now give me a uh, super character theory. But in general, a super character theory is a pair, a pair of characters 
and a partition of the group in such a way that, as I said, this one must be one of my blocks. That means this one is in the character set and this one is one of the blocks of the partition of the group. And then uh, if I look at these characters in a way that we construct them, the constituent of each of these are different. You see, chi tree never appears in any other ones. Moreover, I said the column sums are the same. I do this dividing in a, in a way that the column sums are the same. That means each of these characters are constant on each of these union of conjugacy classes. And in the end, I said the number of columns in e the number of blocks in each row is equal to the number of blocks in each column. That means the number of blocks in this uh, partition is equal to the number of characters that I pick. And this is the definition of super character theory. So now the naive child, normal lattice super character theory. So this was super character theory. Now I start to talk about a very specific super character theory that we call it normal, normal lattice super character theory. So the name says lattice. So I should start with a lattice. What is a lattice? I pick up a subset of normal subgroup of G and this set should be closed under product and intersection. And I add one more criteria, which is one, the, I, the, the trivial subgroup and the whole group must be inside this set. So I pick up such a lattice. So a lattice is a subset of normal subgroup that is closed under product and intersection, but I pick up a lattice that also contains the trivial group and the whole group. Now I want to construct out of such a lattice a super character theory. I have the lattice. So I draw the graph for the lattice, the Hesse diagram. And this is the Hesse diagram for C2 cross C4, which is abelian group of order two times uh, order four. And now I pick up one vertex of this one, for example, this A and B square. And then I set minus for to whatever is below it. So uh, I, I set minus this vertex minus these two, and this one give me a set of elements and I index it by C of this vertex. So this is a union of conjugacy classes. If I continue this one for all vertices, then I have a set of a partition of the group because I want to have a super character theory. The super character theory, one part of a super character theory is a partition of the group. If I continue for all of the vertices of this lattice, this process, and I put all of them in a set, I have a partition of the group. And what I do for the characters, because a super character theory has a, a, a partition and a, a partition of the group and also a set of characters. How I pick up my set of characters. I look at the same lattice. I pick up one of the vertices, like here I pick up uh, this one generated by B squared. And then I look at the character table to find which characters has this one in kernel. So I look at my character table to see which ones have this one in kernel. I see that one, chi one, chi two, chi three, all of them has B squared in kernel. So I put them here. Now, uh, I do for all of the vertices, I go one by one, find the characters that has that vertex in kernel and I put them all together. Now I look at this vertex and set minus it with whatever is above it. So here I have one chi one, chi two and chi three, then I minus it by one chi three and one chi two, which the only thing that remains is chi one. And I denote this character by chi of that vertex, B squared. So if I continue this process for all vertices, then I have a set of characters. So by these two process, I have a set of characters, I have a set of conjugacy classes. Now I put them together and I make a character table, a new character table, which is giving me super character theory. For example, look at this block, 
the sum is zero. Or if I look at this block, the sum is zero, then I put all of them together, I have a super character theory. So the element in my, uh, in the partition of the group called super classes and the characters in those set of characters of super character theory are called super characters. And this, this theorem, I, I did this one, the normal lattice super character theory in my PhD thesis. And uh, right, I, I call it the naive uh, normal lattice super character theory. So why this super character theory? Uh, when I start my post, first postdoc, I worked with Matt on this one to see what properties we have. It has some good properties. The first one is most of the super character theories that we know are either too difficult to work with or too easy. But this one is in the middle. It's not too easy, not too difficult. And the super characters are integral. What does that mean? It means the value of each character on each element of the group is an integer. It's not a complex number. It just goes to Z, which is Z, right? And also there is a very nice uh, lattice super character theory for unipotent upper triangular matrices. For unipotent upper triangular matrices, we can't come up with the restriction character degree or character formula for the irreducible characters because it's impossible. But for the normal lattice super character theory, we can do this. And also this normal lattice super character theory help us to have a representation theoretic realization of combinatorial half algebras, which is the main stream of this talk. Okay, so beautiful castle, Malvinuto to our half algebra. So let's see how we construct uh, this beautiful castle of Malvinuto to our half algebra. But let's see what is a half algebra. At the beginning, a half algebra is a graded vector space. Uh, we usually put the first, the zero part, the complex number, and we define a product for this vector, the graded vector space in a way that it is associative and it has identity. Associativity means if I multiply A, B, then C, it's equal to multiplying A by B, C. And the identity means A times one is one times A is equal to A, quite easy. But what is a co-algebra? A co-algebra has two operators. It's a graded vector space with two operators. The first one is co-product. The second one, which I, I, we do denoted by delta, and the second one is co-unit, which is denoted by epsilon. So, and it must have two properties. When I act by my co-product on some element, then I have some element like sigma A1, A2, the sum of A1 tensor A2. Now, if I again act on my first element by delta, this must e be equal to if I act on my second element on delta, and this is co-associativity. One other, another feature it must have is, if again I act by co-product, I have A1 tensor A2, then I act by my co-unit on the first part and multiply it by second, then it's equal to acting on second part, multiply it by A1 and then sum of all of them, and it must be equal to A. If it has these two properties, we call it a co-algebra. Now, what is a bi-algebra? A bi-algebra is both an algebra and a co-algebra. Moreover, delta and epsilon, co-product and co-unit are algebra morphisms. And what is a graded bi-algebra? When or product and co-product is graded, what does that mean? If I act by co-product on some element, then this must fall into a i tensor a j, the elements in degree i, the elements in degree j, uh, in a direct sum of them. And if I multiply two elements, one in a n and another one in a m, the product must fall in a n plus n. In this sense, we say this uh, by algebra is graded. Connected means the first part or zero part actually is the complex number, then a bi-algebra that is graded and connected called the half algebra. And in this context called the half algebra, half algebra is way bigger than this. There are many 
many other things that are called hub algebra, but not in this sense. So I just work with graded connected uh, hub algebras here. Sorry, I have a, I have a question about um, the, the first condition, um, about them being algebra morphisms. So the only non-trivial part about that is them preserving the product, but delta lands in the tensor product of A with itself. Um, is that an algebra? What's its multiplication? No, this of the, so uh, I have A. A at the beginning is algebra. It's itself an algebra. Then I have two other operators. I add no. two other. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I understand that, but like, so what, what does it mean for delta to be an algebra morphism? Is what I mean. I, I see. I see. So this A is an algebra, and the tensor product of two algebras is an algebra, right? So then this is a, a homomorphism from an algebra to an other algebra. So because the tensor of two algebras is an algebra. I see. So, so the product just distributes across the tensor product to them? Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, sure. Uh, so this is a, uh, the definition of half algebra in this context. And now Malibu-Newton Rotonauer half algebra. So Malibu-Newton Rotonauer half algebra is a graded vector space at the beginning. Then I have uh, the, the I have a basis which they call it fundamental basis, and the, the index set is all permutation. So the degree of each uh, the the dimension of each degree is n factorial. Then I def I want to define a product for Malvolutor Rotonauer half algebra. Uh, for Malvolutor Rotonauer, so for a vector space and make it a algebra. And what is my product? For any two permutation, for example, 31542 and 3124, I pick up a subset of nine, which is the sum of these two. Uh, and the size of that subset must be the size of the second one. Then the shifted shuffle with respect to that set is equal to, I look at, I have nine positions. I look at position one, four, five, and eight. 1, 4, 5, and 8. And instead of 1, 4, 5, and 8 in these positions, I will put 3 plus 5, which is the size of this one. So here I put uh, 3 plus 5. And then here I put 1 plus 5, which is 6. Then I put 2 plus 5, and in the end, 4 plus 5. And in the rest of the positions, I put the first permutation. So this is the sh uh, shift of shuffle with respect to a set. And then when I sum up all of them with respect to all subset of uh, order M, I have the shifted shuffle. This is kind of a new definition of shifted shuffle. And uh, in the paper, if you look at it, in the end, we show that a molecular to our half algebra actually has a half monoid version. So, uh, this is an example, for example, F12, shift the shuffle with F21. I will go with all subset of four, which is 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 3, 4. And for example, when I want to compute this one, so I go to position one and three, and instead of two and one, I put four and three. So I go to position one and three and shift two and one by two. So I have four, three. So this one will give me four, one, three, two. And I continue this one for all of them. So this one give me an algebra for algebra a structure for Malinuto Rotonauer uh, so far then algebra. And now I want to define the co-product for it and make it a co-algebra and then a half algebra. And how do I define the co-product for it? First, I need to define the standardization of a line of numbers. So if I have a line of numbers like four, seven, five, six, two, I look at how many elements are here. I have five elements. I look at the first one, which is four. I ask myself, uh, how many elements here are smaller than or equal to four? There are two. So I put two here. 
I go to seven, I ask how many elements here are smaller than or equal to seven. There are five of them because everyone is uh, less than it. So I put five and I go to five. I ask the same question for the rest. I ask the same question and I make a permutation of five actually. So by a standardization, a line of numbers, you make a permutation. And when I have a permutation, then uh, I define a co-product for a fundamental basis, which is first you pick up a permutation and you cut it at some point and then standardize those two parts that you have. And then sum up all of the cuts that you can have. For example, if I want to compute the co-product of F213, uh, first, I cut it at position zero, I have this one. Then I cut it at here. So in one part, I have two. In another part, I have one, three. Therefore, I have F of a standardization of two tensor, F of a standardization of one, three. A standardization of two is just F1. A standardization of one, three is just one, two. Then I cut at here. Then I have F of a standardization of two, one, and F of a standardization of three. The standardization of this one is just two one and the standardization of this one is just F1. And I continue for all of them. So, so far by this one, I make a co-product and then by this co-product and co-product and define natural the unit and co-unit, then this Malvinuto Rutan hour is a half algebra. Now, the point is I want to use normal lattice super character theory to give a categorification of Malvinuto Rotten Hour half algebra. So, I'm sorry, sir, um, one more question. Uh, what are the unit and co unit? So, the, the unit, you go from one to one, right? What, what's one? Oh, so, because you have. Oh, it, oh it's, it's a zero degree element. Yeah, the, you go to zero, the, from a zero degree element to complex numbers. Right, and the co-unit is kind of similar. You get all of the things that are uh, of degree more than zero to zero. Right, so it's it's quite natural. So, and usually, when we talk about top algebra, because these top algebra that we care about, they have a very simple unit and co-unit. So that's why I here omit most of uh, the definition for. Of unit and co -unit. Yeah. So this is Malvinuto Rotten Hour half algebra. Now we want to start to see how, by that naive chart, which is a normal lattice super character theory, we take over the beautiful castle of Malvinuto Rotten Hour half algebra. So for that one, I need a tower of group first. And what is the, the tower of group that I want to construct? I look at the set of all strictly upper triangular matrices. What is that one? For example, this is NT5, which is all n by n matrices. They are strictly upper triangular, upper triangular, and also the entries comes from a finite field FQ. And I look at this one as an oblique group because with the sum, this is an oblique group. Now. For any permutation, I look at the inversion table. What is inversion table? Let me explain it by one example. So this is a permutation, three, one, four, six, two, five. I look at three, uh, sorry, I look at one and I ask myself how many elements are in the left or to the left of one that are uh, bigger than one. So just there exists three here. So I put one here. Then I go to two and I ask how many elements are to the left of two and bigger than two. So I have one, two, three. So I put three here. I go to six, I ask the same uh, question, two and five. Then I have this line of numbers. So this tuple is called the inversion table of this permutation. When I have inversion table of a permutation, then I can construct a, no, a subgroup of the strictly upper triangular matrices. So this is the permutation, this is this permutation, and by NT of that permutation, 
I mean this normal, this, this subgroup, which is a normal subgroup because we have oblique. So I go over the diagonal, the main diagonal. Here I have one, I have one here. Then I have three, I have three here. I have zero, zero, and then one here. So I construct a group here that these, uh, the only elements that can be not zero are these green ones. So by any, any permutation, I can construct such a subgroup of NTN. So I continue this one, for example, for uh, three, I pick up all permutation and then look at the inversion table. I make a lattice of those. So for example, here I have one, three, two. And if we look at the inversion table of one, three, two, it's one, zero, zero. So I put one, one uh, green here. When I put all of this in a set, it's a lattice. It contains uh, the identity and the whole group. So I have a lattice then. Now, since I have a lattice, I can construct normal lattice super character theory. Uh, so what are my super, car, super classes? I look at, for example, this element and set minus whatever is below it. So the super class correspond to two, three, one is all elements that here must not be zero because if here is zero, it fall down here. I go with all of the vertices and I do the same. And I see that my super classes are these elements. And by red, I mean they can't be zero. So, and this is C312. Uh, uh, and 312 gives me the inversion table, which is 110. Good. So, this will, so I have the lattice. I can construct. Ready? Yes. Can I ask you a question? I missed something. So I thought the way that you were constructing these stars is just put the number of stars in each row and then just like separate when there's a zero. But for three, two, one, you have an overlap. Why was that? So for three, one, two? Or... No, three, two, one, the top. Yes. So when do you get some overlap and when do you get disjoint sets where the stars are in each row? And by overlap, you mean this? Well, there's two stars in column three. And oh. in the previous picture, all the stars were in distinct columns. Right. So here, if I look at the inversion table of one, two, three, yeah. then for one is two, for two is one, for three is zero. And the reason that I have two right here is when I, if I have uh, this red, uh, if I have this one is zero, then elements fall inside this one. So I can't have this one zero. And if I have this one zero, it fall here. So that's why I have two reds here. But in general, why I have this overlap, it's because the inversion of this one is two one zero. Oh, so is there just a star at i comma j if there's an inversion of I? Exactly. Positions, uh, I guess values i and j. Yes. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, thank, thank you. So here I construct all my super classes, but for super characters, I need some definitions. Wait, wait, can I, can I ask something about what Sarah said? Um, wait, the I and J, like the, 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 um, the, uh, the stars are always like left justified or justified according to the diagonal. It's not like a pair i, j, because it's like you're looking at how many, somehow like the the, the, the numbers that are inverted don't match up with the positions. It's just the number matches up, I think. Let me go Is back right? one slide to the bigger one. Great. So. Uh, in, yeah, in go, go back two slides, sorry. This one? No, the one before. Yeah, see, so here there's a row of three things because it's like left justified. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's 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 like this. I go over the diagonal. I look at the diagonal, and then if I have three, I go forward three after the diagonal. 
Right, because that corresponds to like three, two, four, two, and six, two. And it's the, the three, four, and six don't show up. It's just you count the number. Right. The, the, yeah, this is corresponding to two, uh, two, six, two, four, and two, three. But we don't go with two, six here because we just look at the number of. So I have two, six, two, four, yeah. and two, three. So they are three. So, uh, and I don't go with uh, this one, two, six is not zero here, because if I do that, then I have some, some cuts in the middle. Right, yeah. And uh, sorry if I didn't understand the question correctly. Uh, right, so. Okay, now I understand better because of Amy's question. So Amy's saying you sort of left justified against the diagonal that and you put that number of stars, whatever the ith element is in the vector, consecutive. Yes. yes. Yeah, because I, I was thinking the same thing as you, Sarah. I was trying to do it from the IJ pair as well. Yeah, got it now. Got yeah. it now. Thank you. And and thank you very much for asking this question because next time I know I should clarify this one because people are looking at inversions and then that is confusing. Okay, I got it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this will give me uh, super classes. Let's go to super characters. Here I have uh, a, a matrix, but these are functions. These are class functions of my finite field. So these, this is a matrix of functions. And then when I act on upper triangular matrix, matrix, this one acts on this one, this one, oops. This one acts on this one and two, three acts on the entry in two, three and I multiply all of them because these are complex numbers I can multiply. So I define for any matrix of functions, uh, uh, a, a function of NTN. Okay, now if I look at the inversion table of these character, so it's two, four, two, four, one, two, zero, one, zero, two, four, one, two, zero, one, I make them green and then whatever is touching them or it touches the main diagonal, I make it red and the rest are gray. Now I fill it, the green ones with the trivial character, the red ones with regular minus trivial character and the gray ones with regular characters. And this one, this is actually giving me a super character of NTN. And when I put for all uh, permutation, I find this kind of characters and putting it in one set, that gives me the set of all super characters. So by this one, I have a set of uh, conjugate, the set of super classes, set of uh, super characters, and this is giving me a super character theory. Now, same as uh, symmetric functions, I. I, I make a vector a space out of these super characters and I glue all of them to, together. I make a graded vector space. If you look at this graded vector space in each degree, the dimension is n factorial. So it's as a vector space now is isomorphic with uh, Malibu-Nutter Otonauer half algebra as a vector space. But I need to define a product and co-product and make it isomorphic as a half algebra. So. That's as a vector space so far. And then for making it a, to define my uh, product and co-product, I need a series of groups. So I pick up A, which is a subset of nine. Here I have a nine by one, nine by nine matrix. I go to one, four, five, seven, one, four, five, seven. And then this is the cardinality of this one is four. I put three, two, one, zero. And then I make that three, two, one, zero blue. I look at the rest, I make them green. And then I look at again to the blue, look at whatever is below it till the next blue. And I make it gray with the same length. And for this one, and then I make the rest red. So this give me three kind of groups. And then I define an other group which is whatever that is not gray. 
So whatever that is not gray, give me a new, uh, a new group that I call it PA. Okay, now I, my product has two parts, inflation and a stretch. How do I divide, define inflation? So let's assume that I have 136. I put 136 here and I have two characters. Uh, the first character is this one. The second character is this one. Then uh, by the same way, I color green, red, uh, blue, and gray. Now I put the first character that I have, I put it in the red part. So I have one reg minus one and reg. I have one and regular minus one minus trivial. And then in the end, I have trivial. And in the blue part, I put uh, the second one, which is one regular minus one and one. So this is going to P, so I don't need to take care of these two. So the inflation of two characters goes to such a character, and then I stretch it. What does that mean? I have these four that I didn't take care of it in the last slide, but I want to have something in NT7. So I should take care of these four. And instead of these, these three, I put regular character. And instead of this one, because it touched with a one, with a trivial character, I put a regular character minus one. And then I multiply it. This gives me a character. And I multiply it by the degree of the characters that I added here. So then this is how I define my stretch. And then I define a star. The star function just map, uh, just map a character of character index by a permutation to the character index by permutation inverse over the degree of that permutation inverse. This is, at the beginning, it may be feel that this is super artificial, but this is coming from actually the inner product. It's, it's natural when we look at it uh, in terms of inner product. Now, if I uh, have a combination of a star inflation and a stretch, and I make a new function and I act by, on two super characters, this has a very nice combinatorics and the combinatorics actually is just shift the chop. So when these many functors that I have, when I add them all together and I look at the combinatorics of them, it just gives me shifted shuffle. So as an algebra, since this one has the same product as Malvinuto Rotenauer, they are the same. So, so far as a half algebra, as, a, uh, al as an algebra, Malvinuto Rotenauer and these super character functions are the same. And in the end, I will define uh, the co-product. The co-product is, is the combination of deflation and collapse. Deflation is the forgiveness adjoint of inflation and collapse is something that we constructed. And how does it work? So the collapse, look at the elements that are not in PA. For example, if we look at the PA, these three, these two, and this one are not in PA and it's collapse them, it vanished them. So we just put nothing over there. And when I combine collapse with deflation, then it has a very nice combinatorics. So when we do this one, for example, if I do for this character, it gives me these two characters. And if we go through the combinatorics is this, of this one, it's just a shift, a, a deconcatenation, a standardized deconcatenation of this one. So when we go to, uh, when we go to the combinatorics of these functors, we see that the combinatorics is just a standardized deconcatenation. That means for super character that we have is isomorphic as a half algebra with Malvinuto Rotonauer half algebra. And uh, therefore we can say the child that was naive took over the, uh, that beautiful castle and it's resourceful, resourceful, not naive. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for a very nice talk. Yeah, thank you.
I will uh, unshare your screen so you can see us all clapping. So are there questions? Maybe while people are thinking, I'll ask my question. So I'm wondering, how is this helping with the understanding of the representation theory of upper triangular matrices, which is such a hard problem? Right. So, um, it, so in general, we can say what is the irreducible characters of unipotent upper triangular matrices, right? But by using super character theory, at least we can identify some of the characters. So we, we pick up, we say, oh, okay, we don't know irreducible characters, but I know this character, this character, this character, and I have, I have a very good understanding of this set of characters. Uh, in that sense, it helps. But in general, uh, looking at it's the unipotent output triangular matrices is so hard. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, what percentage then of the irreducible characters do you think are found this way? So, uh, so the, the number that we know so far, at least, uh, we have Catalan number of them. And yeah. moreover, there are some, some of them that are indexed by set partitions. But the problem is we don't know exactly how many and uh, how many can you how many irreducible characters UTN has? Right. Because we can't right. count them, right? But so far we know that oh we have this number that is equal to set partitions, we have this number that is equal to uh, Catalan numbers. Right. Got someone knocking at my door. Somebody else ask a question, quiz. Okay, well, if there are no other questions, then shall we thank the speaker one more time? Great talk, Fareed. Thank you very much. Thank you. But actually, see who that is. Oh, Mike's a Nice. Oh, that's Mike.